All right. So as I heavily hinted earlier, I'm going to be going into a little more detail about uh, the dragonfly life cycle today. Um, a lot of us are seeing our first dragonflies of the year around this time. Um, and something that's kind of interesting about dragonflies is the life cycles of different species um, sync up with the year in a lot of different ways. So we have a dragonfly around here that's called the autumn meadowhawk, um, which you will most often see in September or even October, um, which is not normal dragonfly season. But those meadowhawks um, just tend to become adults later in the year. So the cool thing about dragonflies is that's a little different than, say, like birds that have a, nest, a pretty solid nesting season, late winter, early spring, although that varies. Um, you can see different species of dragonflies at different stages of their life cycle for a lot of the year. Um, so we can start off just going through this little diagram here. Um, of course, so all life starts, well, not all life, but animal life starts with mating adults. Um, and you probably have seen dragonflies in this kind of formation if you've been near a pond at some point at the height of summer. Um, and so to teach a little bit about what's actually going on here, um, this is the male on top and the male attaches their abdomen, as it says here, to the female's head. Um, and the female kind of curls under, uh, the morphology there doesn't really make a lot of sense, uh, to us humans, but that's just how it works. Um, and most dragonflies do deposit their eggs underwater. They'll find some sort of vegetation that's close to the water and deposit their eggs in the water. But there are some exceptions to that. Some dragonflies deposit their eggs on the stalks of plants that are rising out of the water um, or on leaves that are hanging over the water. Um, it really just has to do with uh, proximity to any sort of body of water. There have even been documented cases of dragonflies laying eggs and things like bird baths, um, tent, like cisterns, that kind of thing. Um, and they're really good at detecting water too. Um, I read somewhere that there was a study where they hung like black gauze over water so you couldn't actually see the body of water. And the dragonflies that were migrating overhead still detected this body of water underneath them and were able to lay their eggs there. Uh, so they have pretty impressive sense of where bodies of water are and how to find them. And the reason for that is that dragonfly nymphs are aquatic. Um, they are some of the most important invertebrate predators in places like vernal pools, besides things like frogs and stuff like that. They're really fierce predators. Um, I can show you a little video here of the dragonfly. This looks like it might be a damselfly nymph, I'm not sure. Um, but they have this incredible jaw that kind of um, extends outward. You can see it a little bit there um, and kind of clamps on to its prey. Oh. Just an amazing jaw there. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and notably, definitely could have inspired uh, alien vs. Predator there. So, sorry, I've gone off my script a little bit here. So yeah, they're, they're fierce aquatic predators, really important predators in vernal pools, but really any kind of fresh water you find. Um, they're some of the, some of the most important predators of invertebrates. Um, and then the next step for dragonfly in its life cycle is the molt where they turn into adults. So like I mentioned last time in the last fun fact, um, dragonflies don't pupate. They have an incomplete metamorphosis, which means there's a nymph stage and there's an adult stage. There's nothing in between. Um, and this is an example of a very stark difference between the nymph stage and an adult stage. For a grasshopper, the nymph looks very much like the adult, but for a dragonfly, it looks very drastically different, completely different lifestyle. So, let me see if I can speed this up a little bit so we can see this dragonfly molting. 
if I had known Tom had some nice documentation of it, I might have been able to incorporate that, but we weren't coordinated enough for that. So the dragonfly will kind of exit the exuvia here, which is the old exoskeleton of the nymph. And you'll often see those um, on the edge of the water at this time of year. Um, it just gets left behind. Um, I actually have some fond memories of col collecting dragonfly exuvia um, near a lake when I was a kid. I thought they were really cool. So um, the dragonfly emerges here. And you can see at this point, its wings are just kind of little stubs. Um, most in, most wind, winged insects, uh, when they do molt into their adult stage, um, uh, they emerge with these kind of like uninflated wings. Um, and there actually is this theory that insect wings evolve from some sort of vasculature, some sort of like gill or something like that. Um, it's one of the only structures that existed before the wing that had that kind of complex branching vasculature that could have turned into a wing. Um, so when the adult, as you can see in number six here of this graphic, the adult will emerge with these kind of deflated wings and will spend a few hours, I believe, um, kind of inflating these wings to their rigid structure that they come, that they need to fly. Um, and they dry out a little bit as well. And at that point, the dragonfly is done with its metamorphosis, um, ready to fly off. Some dragonflies, even though they are done molting, um, will change color over the course of their adult life. So some young, freshly molted dragonflies will have a very different color than a more mature adult dragonfly that molted months ago or something like that. And as they are fearsome predators in the water, they're fearsome predators in the air as well. They're some of the best flyers we know in the animal kingdom. They can turn on a dime, they can dive, they can dart, and they can move really fast relative to their body length and weight. Um, so like a lot of other people, dragonflies really close to my heart um, and their life cycle is just really cool. Um, and something that really does use a lot of the ecosystem. They're, they start in water, they, their adult life, sometimes they stay near water and sometimes they don't. So these are really organisms that, um, that interact with many different species in many different environments um, and are really cool to just keep track of over the course of the year. So I'm happy dragonfly season is here. And that's that.